an intercontinental flight, an unmarked cargo plane, an unscheduled stop, blood leaking out of the cargo hold, a dead body, and 67 tons of banknotes. Add to all of that the notorious CIA, and you have an international plot of deception and mystery that even Hollywood couldn't fabricate. Things came to a head on February 13th, 2016. An unmarked cargo plane en route from Munich, Germany to Durban, South Africa made an unplanned stop in Harare, Zimbabwe. The plane in question was operated by a shady airline with the contradictory name of Western Global Airlines. After all, how could something Western also be global? The cargo on board was vaguely designated as being a diplomatic shipment. Its crew comprised three pilots, two of whom were American, and a mechanic. There were two additional passengers on board who were acting as couriers for the shipment to South Africa. The cargo plane's pilot had radioed in for permission to land and brought the plane down on the tarmac of what was then called Harare International Airport. As the plane came to a stop, one of the airport's ground crew noticed strange reddish marks streaked in the side of the plane. A closer inspection only confirmed what had been suspected. They were streaks of blood splattered all along the fuselage. It didn't take long to locate the source of the ominous blood streaks. The dark red trails led to a cargo door on the underside of the plane. From the cracks in the cargo door, the assembled ground crew discovered an even ghastlier sight. A constant drip of dark red blood visibly leaking from the door and pooling on the tarmac beneath the plane. When first asked by the Harare airport crew as to the nature of the blood on the underside of the cargo plane, the pilot claimed that they had hit a bird in mid-flight earlier that day. However, it was obvious to those observing that whatever, or whoever, the source of the blood was, it was still inside the plane. Airport officials were summoned and quickly demanded that the cargo door be opened. The pilot opened the door to climb inside and investigate the source of the trail of blood. Once he did that, the source of the blood immediately made itself known. The body of a deceased black man fell out of the plane dramatically, torso first, and became lodged in the open door the cadaver half dangling out of the plane as more blood pooled on the tarmac beneath him. Clearly, this was a shocking discovery. But how did a bloodied body end up in the cargo hold of a plane carrying what was supposed to be a diplomatic shipment? The crew denied all prior knowledge of the body or its identity. Charity Chiramba, the lead investigator, and also senior assistant commissioner and head of PR for the Zimbabwe Republic Police, was not convinced by what the crew stated, and he immediately detained them and had the plane impounded. He ordered that until the local police completed a thorough investigation of the dead man, no one would be allowed to leave Zimbabwe. It's worth noting here that the initial reason given for the plane having to stop in Zimbabwe was on the basis of it being an emergency landing. However, this would be revised in an official statement to the press issued three days after this event, in which the landing at Harare's airport was stated as being nothing more than a routine refueling stop. This flip-flopping on facts and things that just didn't add up from those involved became a hallmark of this entire bizarre affair. In trying to get a semblance of understanding the truth of this affair, it's helpful to understand some of the details regarding this plane and its crew. The plane itself was a McDonnell Douglas MD-11F, registered with the serial number N545JN. Though no logos or company names were painted on its sides, the plane was documented as being owned by Western Global Airlines, a small all-cargo airline based in Florida and founded in 2013. Western Global Airlines specializes in both commercial and military charters, with a fleet of 14 MD-11F planes in its service. But what is perhaps most notable about the otherwise generic by design Western Global Airlines is its parent company, Southern Air. Southern Air began as the Southern Air Transport Company, or SAT, and was founded in 1947 in Miami as a charter airline which made puddle jumper flights carrying shipments to the Bahamas. Its trajectory took a sharp turn when it was acquired by the CIA in 1960 and became a subsidiary of the CIA's vast and shadowy private airline network. The CIA sold Southern Air Transport in 1973, but the company continued to work in the military and intelligence arenas, in addition to the various commercial shipping enterprises. It filed for bankruptcy on October 1st, 1998. On the same day, a CIA report was released which claimed that they had used SAT as a covert means for drug trafficking. The airline was brought out of bankruptcy in 1999 by new owners James and Sonny Neff, who shortened the name of the company to Southern Air. These would be the very same men who later founded Western Global Airlines. 
This history and the owner's ties to the CIA are thin at best. And it's unknown just how it all factors into the Harare Airport affair. But the context suggests that perhaps more was going on than anyone involved was willing to admit. The next big wrinkle in the case would have nothing to do with the body or the blood, however, and everything to do with what the plane was carrying. We turn now to the so-called diplomatic shipment. It turned out that the bloody streaks on the side of the plane had also been noticed by airport workers in Munich as well. But the plane's crew had brushed concerns aside, claiming that the plane had hit a bird on its morning flight into Munich from Belgium. The plane left Munich on February 13th as scheduled, with the flight number AJK4425 bound for King Shaka International Airport in Durban, South Africa. In its cargo hull were 67 tons of freshly printed banknotes to be delivered to the South African Reserve Bank, or SARB. This hefty sum of money turned out to be millions in newly printed South African rands, produced in Germany as a part of the contingency plans for the SARB, which included contracting out some of their currency production overseas. Having been minted in Munich, the vast sum of money was now on its way to a central bank in Durban to then be put into distribution nationally. Not surprisingly, by the following day, the South African Reserve Bank had tracked down their missing piles of money. A spokesperson for the bank called the Zimbabwe police in a panic, demanding that the plane's cargo be released immediately and securely transported to South Africa as soon as possible. Suddenly, the money became the new focal point of the story. The press was now reporting that the plane was carrying millions of South African rands and the South African Central Bank wanted its money back. Meanwhile, Western Global Airlines issued a statement that the corpse was suspected to have been a stowaway who may have entered the airplane during a previous stop. This tied in with what the crew of the plane repeatedly claimed. No one knew who the body was or how and when they had gotten aboard. On the third day of the plane and its crew being held, the South African bank issued a statement admitting that the plane was carrying much more than the media had been reporting. It came with another urgent plea to release their detained currency at once. Another release followed the next day from the bank. The SARB, in the normal course of its currency operations, adheres to sound business practices and has business contingency planning arrangements in place to secure a continued supply of banknotes to the economy. These arrangements are put in place to mitigate any major disruption in the domestic banknote operations. The bank's desperation put significant pressure on the Zimbabwean investigation to find something damning or then releasing the crew and the literally bloody plane. Six days after it landed in Zimbabwe, the official autopsy results came in and determined that the body had very probably been a stowaway, just as the crew had claimed. The cause of death was a lack of oxygen, and there was no evidence found of any further foul play. Inspector Charamba was forced to let the crew go. As the Western Global crew made a fast exit from Zimbabwe, unanswered questions swirled in their wake. These questions only added to the mystery. Firstly, the body. It was unclear exactly how long the body had been left in the plane, though the fact that it had been significantly decomposed suggested an extended period of time. How was this possible? This fact unfortunately prevented any possibility of a positive identification of the body. Secondly, the blood. Why did the crew feel the need to explain to both the ground crew at Munich Airport and the ground crew and officials at Harare Airport that the streaks of blood were nothing more than a bird strike? Was that story an intentional cover-up of the actual source of the blood? And why not investigate the blood themselves? Thirdly, the unscheduled stop. Why had the Western Global crew needed to stop in the first place? And why had they chosen Harare as a suitable destination to do so? The pilot was vague when questioned about why the plane required an unscheduled stop at all, beyond later claiming it was a refueling stop. It's worth noting that the pilot did state that they had initially intended to land at Maputo's airport in Mozambique, but were denied, and this is why they diverted to Harare's airport instead. Very tellingly, why had the official story pivoted from initially calling the stop an emergency landing and then revising their story to call it a routine fuel stop a few days later? Fourthly, the so-called refueling. If the reason for the stop was in fact to refuel, why would the pilot turn back from Mozambique and fly the nearly 800 miles northwest in the wrong direction to Harare when the distance to their destination, Durban, was to the south and most importantly, significantly shorter, almost 500 miles shorter in fact. 
Lastly, and possibly a crux issue for the whole saga, is this. Why was the so-called stowaway bleeding so profusely, and why was he inside the cargo hold? Stowaways don't usually get inside cargo areas, and when they do die on flights, it's usually due to extreme hypothermia, not bleeding to death for reasons unknown. In terms of theories, there are only a handful that are plausible. One circulated theory was that the crew had been attempting to dump the body while flying over Mozambique, but the doors had jammed up due to the cabin pressure. The logic followed that the plane was then forced to land elsewhere under the ruse of refueling while the body could be discreetly disposed of. This theory has never been substantiated, of course, but it is one of a few theories that might explain the change in route, as well as the deep CIA ties to Western Global Airlines itself. Was the agency involved in this seemingly abnormal shipment of massive amounts of South African currency? If so, why? The CIA certainly has a strong presence in South Africa via its embassy in Pretoria and consulates in Johannesburg and Cape Town, where it maintains black sites. The pieces are on the table, but at this point, they've never been correctly put together to give a full picture of what exactly happened that day. In the end, the most human aspect of the saga of Western Global Airlines flight N545JN was that of the dead man. Who was he? And why did he die the way he did on that fateful flight from Munich to Durban? <laughs>